I want to first thank everybody uh, for uh, coming tonight to the Franklin Club Boston event. Uh, it's a very exciting uh, a meeting, and I think you're really going to enjoy the event tonight. Uh, this is our seventh year as a club. I won't spend a, a lot of time talking about the club, but just give you a brief overview. Uh, the club was started by me and a few other people from Northeastern. The whole premise and why it's called Ben Franklin is the idea of giving back to others. So uh, if you come here tonight, look for ways to help other people. And it's amazing when you do that, how everybody here will try to help you. So it's really about pushing out as opposed to taking in. Uh, and it's really uh, worked out well. Tonight, uh, we've got Brian Halligan, CEO of HubSpot, here tonight. Uh, so let's do not shortchange him. I was told to do the short one. Uh, Brian Halligan is the CEO of HubSpot, a marketing software company founded three years ago to help business transform the way market uh, the way they market their products by leveraging the internet in just three years, HubSpot has already accumulated 2,000 customers. Brian is also entrepreneur in residence of MIT and the author of Inbound Marketing, Get Found Using Google, Social Media, and Blogs. So that's the formal intro. I'll give you my perspective on Brian uh, and, and his company. I think he's got really one of the coolest companies going on in Boston. Uh, I think it's so cool that uh, I helped uh, one of their latest reps, uh, Jill Franiano, get a job there. Uh, they've got an unbelievable culture, unbelievable products, and I truly believe what you're going to see tonight, uh, what Brian has created, is the next Salesforce.com with a slightly different spin. Uh, so I'm very excited about the event, uh, both because of the product, but also because of social media in general. Uh, if you don't know a lot about this space, uh, Brian is by far one of the experts. I've seen him speak before, and I know you're going to get a lot out of the event. So with that, I'll turn it over to Brian. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Um, really honored to, to be here. I'm Brian Halligan. I'm going to talk a little bit about, I heard it's an entrepreneurial crew, Ben Franklin at all, uh, being an entrepreneur. Really? <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk about some of the, the, the lessons I've learned in starting HubSpot and talk about entrepreneurial marketing, what you can do to sort of take your marketplace by storm. Um, there's a couple topics I'm going to touch on. One is to talk about what's kind of happening in the marketing space. There's a lot of changes going on. It seems like the way customers learn and buy seems to be changing quite a lot. And we need to match the way we market to the way people uh, buy. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to talk about when you get back to your office tomorrow, what are the things you need to start to do immediately to start taking advantage of these changes, the social media sphere, the blogosphere, search engines, all this new interesting stuff. I'm going to talk about how to build sort of an entrepreneurial marketing team. What does that new marketing team look like? What do you as the VP or the entrepreneur, or the CEO, what should your role be in this new marketing mix? What should your role be in the blogosphere, in the social media sphere? And I'm going to do a little primer on sort of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial economics that I think will be interesting for everyone. Um, I'm not going to really talk at all about HubSpot in my presentation. I really try to avoid talking about the company. I'm going to talk about the industry and what's changing. If folks have questions sort of at the end, I can fire through. I'm an open book. I'll answer any questions you have on the business. Does that sound okay? And feel free to stop me as we go through. Um, when, I, when I think about um, the, the way sort of marketing's traditionally worked, I think about, of course, I think about my mom and my dad. And I go back to, it's like 1970, and mom and dad are sitting on the couch. It's 8.05 p.m., and they're watching um, All in the Family. Anyone else watch All in the Family? Parents watch All in the Family? <laughs> Who would have thought marketing lessons could come from All in the Family? <laughs> about five minutes into the show, Mom and dad are sitting on the couch, and an advertisement comes on. The advertisement is for Irish Spring Soap. And being Brian Patrick Halligan, mom and dad sit there, and they watch the entire advertisement. They're on the couch, and they watch it. And when the advertisement's over, my dad turns to my mom, and he says, you know, we use that ivory soap stuff. We're Irish. Why don't we switch to Irish Spring? And my mom says, that's a good idea. Let's switch to Irish Spring. And the next thing you know, they converted a Dove customer to Irish Spring. And that's very interesting what happened back in 1970. And I sort of roll the clock forward 10 years later. Cheers comes on. It's 8.05, and the ad comes on for Irish Spring. Dad's got the clicker now. No fucking way Dad's watching that Irish Spring. <laughs> roll the clock forward a little further. Dad's got the clicker, and he's got ESPN. Not watching that Irish Spring ad keep rolling that clock further to today and they're watching The Office and it's 8.05 p.m. that ad comes on and just there's no way in the universe dad's watching that ad. He's got a clicker, he's got 500 stations, 
Um, he's got he's a TiVo. He's got stuff going on his PC. The age of the the way marketing has worked for the last fifty or sixty years is fundamentally broken. I think Madison Avenue is broken. The way we've all grown up marketing our products, doing television ads, radio ads, emails, cold calls, it's just fundamentally breaking right before our eyes. And there's a real mismatch between the way people market and the way people learn today. And we block this stuff out. So people who did cold calls. So I grew up, my first job out of school, I was at Parametric Technology. Anyone know PTC? I was the first inside sales guy at PTC pounding the crap out of the phone every, every day, cold calling my brains out. And back in 1990, people actually picked up the phone. It was a very interesting thing that happened. Today, you can sit in a cold calling pit with telesales guys, and a great telesales guy can go a whole day, and they just can't make one connection. It's just no one picks up their phone, they have caller ID. Email marketing. We started email marketing at PTC sort of in the late 90s, and people used to respond, and today everyone sort of got spam protection. They block it out. Television, we talked about TiVo. If I think about myself and radio advertising, so it's sort of in vogue today for technology companies to do radio advertising, like Constant Contact's doing it a lot now. Kayak's starting to do it a lot. Intuit's doing it a lot. I have Pandora on my iPhone, and I plug it right into my car, and I listen to internet radio. So it's just, it's an end of an era. The, the, the rules of marketing that created such great companies like Procter & Gamble and IBM and Pfizer, it's over. And, and the other, that's one big change that's going on. The other big change that's going on is people like us in this room and everybody out there in our marketplace have fundamentally changed the way they shop and learn. So people, your average knowledge worker does, you know, 20 to 25 Google searches a day. A lot of Google searching going on. Your average knowledge worker is unsubscribing to the Boston Globe and to Time Magazine and subscribing to Boston Dirt Dog's blog to learn about the uh, Boston Red Sox and Seth Godin's blog to learn about what's going on in the marketing wor uh, world and Seth Godin's blog to learn about the business world in Boston. People are turning to the blogosphere. More and more people are also turning to Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. People just fundamentally have changed the way they shop and learn. And so the idea behind HubSpot and the idea behind the, mo uh, the modern world of marketing is there's a fundamental mismatch between the way people market their products and the way people buy and sell. And to really take advantage of these changes, you need to do instead of what I call outbound sort of interruption-based marketing, more inbound marketing. How do you take advantage of Google? How do you take advantage of blogs? How do you take advantage of social media? How do you take advantage of iPhone apps to pull people in in the natural course of the way they shop and learn? Everybody with me so far? Okay. So how the hell do you do that? Back to the office. Uh, Halligan, you know, I thought he was full of shit, but he said some interesting stuff up there yesterday. How do I do it when I get back to my office? A couple of steps. Step number one, the interesting thing about being an entrepreneur today or VP of marketing or VP of sales versus, let's say, 10 years ago is the friction in the marketplace is much, much lower. So if you were an entrepreneur or you're VP of marketing or VP of sales 10 years ago, you could spend a lot of money on PR and advertising, and you could basically spread your word with money. It really worked pretty well. Um, today, that same good idea, you don't need to spend a bunch of money on PR, a bunch of money on marketing. If you've got a good idea, and you use your blog and you use the internet, you can spread that idea like wildfire. The friction in the marketplace for good ideas is very low. When I think about that, I think about movies. So if a new movie comes out on a Friday night, you know, it's made or it's it's made or broken by Saturday morning. The Twitter sphere, the chatter on Twitter, people either say it's great or it's terrible, and by fr by Saturday morning it's essentially <coughs> broken. And the same thing really goes for your product. So what really works today is you need to have a product that's really remarkable and interesting. It's a very old uh, idea, but your product has to be remarkable in your marketplace. People have to want it. It has to be very unique. And the uni more unique the product, the more likely it is to spread on the Internet. If your product's undifferentiated, if you're the 10th online backup storage maker in your marketplace, you're <laughs> you weren't that 10 years ago because you your venture capitalists could spin your way through it. But you can't spend your way through it today. You actually have to have a very unique product. The thing about the internet that's interesting is you've got a much big target, much bigger target audience, but you've got a lot more competition. So you're better off going very, very narrow and getting much more unique in your marketplace. Everybody with me so far? Questions? Come on. No questions? Okay. <laughs> 